Hi, I'm Christy Bird McKeeve. I am the founder and CEO of Healthy Rural California. And I'm also the GME administrator. And that's something I'm going to talk about today focused on the recruitment of a psychiatry residency program director. So today is September 8th and it's 2021. So we just posted this job late Friday, right before Labor Day weekend. And uh, as I thought about it, um, just trying to get the job description out there posted and circulating, I realized that there's probably some things that people might have questions about or just sort of hesitate because it's a brand new program in an area with no other residencies and um, it's gonna be innovative. <laughs> so I thought I'd give a, a chat about what we're doing and um, invite anyone who's interested in applying for the program director position to reach out and talk to me um, and also our DIO. Well, I will introduce um, just for, it's just me and you in this video right now. <laughs> so I'll talk about him in a minute. Uh, so again, we are, brand new. So Healthy Rural California itself is a 501c3. We got IRS approval in January of 2020. And a few months later, um, we were working on a psychiatry residency feasibility study. Um, that was actually all through Butte Glen Medical Society. So I'm also the executive director of Butte Glen Medical Society. And um, B, we call it BGMS. So I'm going to probably default to that because it's a lot easier to say. Um, but BGMS has been, we're celebrating our 75th anniversary this year and I've been in the area of Northern California for, uh, or operating as organized medicine since the late 1800s. So um, longstanding tradition um, and in 2019, BGMS's board met with uh, local legislators and talked about the access to care issues that have been chronic in the area as a rural area, uh, but that had become um, even worse after the campfire. And so we set about um, looking at a residency task force. And of course this was BGMS because Healthy Rural California hadn't gone through its steps of um, applying to be a 501c3 yet. And so um, we, we just immediately said psychiatry is our number one priority. And then hopefully in the near future, we can start looking at family medicine or internal medicine and really doing those feasibility studies and business plans about what our community can hold um, for that. And just because this is a discussion with potential psychiatry residency program directors, I wanna say that those future uh, primary care residencies, whatever we come up with through the feasibility study um, will be likely integrated behavioral health. So there's some really great stuff that we're working on and you, we just can't put it out there yet as a done deal. Um, but hopefully that will uh, really be interesting to a program director who's wanting to come into a community that really will welcome you with open arms because we all know how important it will be to have a psychiatry residency located um, in this community. Uh, but um, that, you know, it's, it's just very much needed. And um, so uh, first and foremost, I want to reiterate that this is a rural psychiatry residency program. And I would love for somebody to give me some data. I, I started, you know, we applied for a HRSA grant um, the other day, and I, I didn't have enough time to go into it, but it looks like there are only 11 rural psychiatry programs in the United States. Do I, am I remembering that correctly? There's maybe it's 28 in the United States. No, no, no. There are 11 rural psychiatry programs in the United States. And then of California's psychiatry residency programs, there was something 23 or 25 programs total. And it looks like maybe only one rural psychiatry in Southern California. And for anybody who hasn't been to California yet, I'm sure most people have, but it's a very long state and so the difference between northern california and southern california is is tremendous it's um so i'm going to be talking about the area north of sacramento um i happen to live in sacramento and i commute to our offices in chico which is about an hour and a half sometimes it can be less uh, if i need to get to oroville it's an hour plus a little bit so not not a bad commute at all 
Um, and then lots of people actually will, will be working on the, the housing in the areas that um, the clinical facilities for the residents are located. Um, so we'll be, we'll be working on all that, but I just wanted to start sketching that out in your minds for folks who are not familiar with this area because um, there's a lot of misconceptions about California and uh, what, what's going on. So when we say rural, like how rural is it? Um, and so we'll, we'll be producing some videos uh, in the coming months just to show the environment and sort of get a sense of the lay of the land. And then once we are accredited as a psychiatry residency with ACGME, we'll be doing the full on recruitment of our residents to start in the summer of 2023. So we're on a fast track uh, in terms of residency programs, but we have been working on this since the residency task force formed in 2021 doing the feasibility study, really working on um, to, you know, dry, getting into the community and what, what can the community support in an area where there are no residency programs yet uh, and definitely no psychiatry residency programs in the entire Northern California region from Sacramento, above Sacramento, all the way to the Oregon border, and then above the Oregon border into sort of mid-Oregon where OSHU is uh, located, Oregon S Science and Health University, OSHU. Um, and so I think I might've, Oregon Health and Sciences University. Anyway, so that's a vast territory. There's a lot of frontier land, not even rural, frontier land between Sacramento and OSHU. So, you know, and no psychiatry residency programs. This is really innovative, really exciting. And I think a program director who really wants to help rural communities could find a wonderful place to um, set down roots and, and join us. Um, so, and really somebody please send me an email and correct me on how many psychiatry residency programs are considered rural in the area. Now, we are not creating a rural track, an RTT. Um, I wanna be clear on that. What we are creating is a consortium, a community-based consortium. Um, so Healthy Rural California has applied to be the sponsoring institution. Um, we hope to hear from ACGME soon about that because that would then enable us to apply for the psychiatry residency and sort of get that in, in the works, um, and we we uh, are you know needing to go through those process. We have a GME committee that was in full effect um, this spring in 2021, um, and so we're we're really pulling all of these these pieces together. And in the process of applying for uh, the HRSA grant this summer, um, you know, just really understanding the concept of a rural psychiatry is really unique um, in the country. They exist um, and perhaps this may be the only community-based consortium model. It's, going, it's a four by four. Uh, so when the residents join us, our first cohort will be, we hope, in the summer of 2023. And then we'll have a full steady state of 16 residents circulating through the different clinical facilities uh, in the fourth year of the program. So 2027, I think I, I calculated that out. So, uh, you know, you're, you're not gonna be stepping into a program that's fully functioning with the 16 residents. It will be a gradual lead up, which I think is also very unique. Um, and then helping the clinical facilities and the, and the faculty really get acclimated and um, the, not to say that's all on the program director's shoulders. So there's me, the GME administrator, and at least for the next two years, I'm gonna be allocating at least three quarters of my time to making this successful um, because so many of the, the different positions have to be filled, the approvals have to come in, we have to be accredited. There's some fundraising that has to happen. There's some grants that we'll be able to draw, uh, draw down once we're accredited. Um, so it's a complicated uh, sort of launch, um, but we're halfway through it and we're doing great stuff. So the DIO, very important position, is Dr. Theodore Zwerdling, who is a pediatrician. He had been at UC Davis and helped set up 
a new residency within the UC Davis world. Um, and then he retired. Uh, and then like me, in the wake of the campfire, the campfire was in November, 2018 and just was um, an emergency site and FEMA uh, site until February 1st of 20, 2019. So I started in at Butte Glen Medical Society in January, 2019 and then Dr. Swordling joined Adventist Health Feather River, which is the, the Feather River Hospital had been in Paradise, uh, the town that had burned in the campfire. So we kind of came into this community um, separately, <laughs> but fortunately our paths crossed and he was right there uh, since day one with the residency task force. And um, Dr. Swordling is a very wonderful person, very kind and um, is very focused on well-being. Uh, so that's something that's, you know, it's part of our policies per ACGME, you know, uh, fatigue mitigation, all of that. It's all part of our policies. Um, but, you know, making that a priority is really um, being driven by Dr. Zwerdling. And um, so there's a lot more stuff we're going to be baking into the experience and the education for the residents. Um, all of that is going to be mapped out between now and probably fall 20, about a year from now in 2022. Um, and so, like, it's like building a plane right before while it's taxiing down the runway because so much has to be in place in order to be accredited and then there's so much that has to be in place in order to recruit all the residents and then participate once the match day and rmp opens september 15th 2022 so um yeah we're <laughs> the full benefits package for residents all of that so all of that work is on um, my shoulders on Dr. Wordlings, on Gretchen Bender, who's our Director of Finance and Administration. We're gonna be hiring a program coordinator, hopefully who can start December 1st. I have to get that job posting going and the recruitment for it underway. As you know, as a program director and a program coordinator, those are the two key positions to ensure that the, the residency program provides the quality education since day one, all the way through the residents four years in the program each residence <laughs> and as well the faculty. Um, and so it's, um, it's pretty exciting. So Dr. Swordling <laughs> and I, uh, Adventist Health Feather River, just so you know, is the majority of his time. Um, and then they have a psychiatrist who is in the Paradise area, which is very important, who wants to be a part of this a program letter of agreement um, to uh, work with us um, as, a, as a site rotation. So I, I mentioned that because trauma-informed care is a huge part of what we're building. Um, so the curriculum will be defined in the coming months and um, trauma-informed care will be there uh, because not only was there the campfire, but we, we've had six disasters in five years. So it's been trauma upon trauma of our community. So um, I, wanna, I wanna state that because I think um, it will provide a really wonderful opportunity for the residents, but also for the program director to uh, really make this program in a rural community uh, so special um, and very much needed. I've been told, thank you, Dr. Katras, that uh, if all I do with the rest of my career is establish this psychiatry residency that I have done, uh, an amazing impact. And I, I convey that to you as a potential program director because this position will be uh, truly the one that, that makes that impact um, happen in, in the area. So I, I pass that on from Dr. Katras to, to a potential uh, program director with this, this video. Um, wanted to talk a little bit. So as you know, with ACGME, the residents are to be within a one hour drive of any of the clinical facility rotations, right? So it's one hour drive from, from the center. And the center as it's looking will be in Oroville, which is about 20 minutes from Chico. So our offices are in Chico, but we'll be centering a lot of the residency program in Oroville, it looks like. Uh, still all of the clinical facilities are being mapped out, but we have agreements from 
um, two FQHCs, one is Northern Valley Indian Health and one is Ampla Health. And now Ampla has their psychiatrist located in Calusa County. Um, then they have a lot of their, well, their headquarters are in Yuba Sutter County and I'll talk about that. Um, and then we're of course in Butte County, which borders Glen and Tehama counties. Um, and so we're, uh, you know, we're looking at that, you know, just minimizing the, um, the drive time for residents and then working on potential housing that would um, also keep uh, commute time down, right? So all of those partnerships will be in place by next fall as we open our doors to start the recruitment process for sure. Uh, and so um, a bit about, so if you look at my hands, cause I don't have a map in front of me, but there's, there's Sacramento. And if you drive about a half an hour North, you get to uh, Marysville, which is actually bit within both Yuba and Sutter counties. And so when you look at that particular uh, city, it's Yuba Sutter is what we call it. The, the towns overlap the two counties. So it's just Yuba Sutter. Uh, and then Calusa's off to the um, west, much more, much more rural. Um, and some of these counties that you're gonna be hearing about are listed as the top uh, counties in the state, unfortunately, with the lowest physician to patient ratios in the entire state. So um, like Calusa, I think, and Glen are, uh, have been um, in that dubious uh, location. So, but this, this is part of why we're doing this residency program because, you know, we need to help drive uh, that the pivot, the access to care issues that are in the area. And so then, from Yuba, Sutter, or Yuba City, Marysville, uh, it's about a half an hour drive to Oroville in Butte County. So none of this is far apart. It sounds like, oh, it's rural and it's, um, you know, yeah, yeah, there's some amazing almond orchards and other um, agricultural farm, you know, tons of orchards. I'm not even sure I know all of the different ones. There's also some rice fields, but, we're not all that far apart from, from each other. And so it's just a matter of, um, we'll, we'll figure out how to help the residents and, and our future program director find housing. Um, but in that regard, it's really important that we find a program director who has experience um, and leadership of collaboration. Because even though it's all within an hour drive, and I'm describing it as not that far apart. And I just commute, you know, from Sacramento up to Chico. Um, you know, they are different facilities and there's a lot of collaboration that has to happen. And they are all GME naive, all of us. So the program directors, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna be doing a lot of prep work before the program director starts. Um, uh, we're gonna be distributing the binders of our GME policies. And yes, it'll be hard copy binders. We do that, but we also will have PDFs of everything. So we're, we do have, you know, some modern touches to our work. Um, and so we'll be doing that this fall, like October, November, and then prepping all of the clinical facilities for their site visit with AC GME. So there's a lot of work that will be done but that program director is really gonna be the connector point between everybody. So we really wanna see some experience leading collaboration, um, whatever that looks like to, to your experience if you're interested in applying. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to note about the geographic area is the amazing coalitions that are just eager to have the program director, but in particular the residents joining. So first and foremost, the Buglen Opioid Safety Coalition, uh, near and dear to my heart, we're very active in that, um, is, uh, you know, a, a place to really work on um, building up a community in, in different ways to fight the opioid epidemic. Uh, yeah, and, and that coalition has specifically said um, that they, they hope that we can work on expanding the medically assisted treatment providers in the community, their substance use navigator programs that we're tied into. And it's just, it's gonna be a great um, 
community to step into. Um, and the other one I wanted to mention is, of course, our partners, North Valley Community Foundation, who have um, provided us with the funding to get to where we are right now. Thank you uh, for that. And um, but they also have a couple of initiatives following the campfire, um, starting with healing communities and now moving into Thrive. And then this year in the past couple of months, really working on a suicide response team because there have been, unfortunately, some um, increases in, in suicides, particularly with youth in the area. And so uh, realizing that um, people aren't familiar uh, or don't know where to turn to, or maybe the families need some support. And so and North Valley Community Foundation is leading this effort to create those response teams. And of course, that would be um, amazing to connect our psychiatry residents into it. Um, so I, I think there's a lot, I, I'm trying to convey it all. Uh, it's a beautiful place uh, to be. Um, there's a lot of outdoor activities. Um, if you wanted to take a look at some videos that exist right now, I invite you to Google the Shasta Community Health Clinic. Um, and if you, you know, Sacramento to Chico, about an hour and a half drive. And Chico up to Reading is another hour and a half drive. And Shasta Community Health Clinic is located there. And they have um, one of the first residency programs in, in Northern California. It's family medicine. It's about a decade old. The other one that's already been established, also I think family medicine is up in Eureka, which is closer to the Oregon border, which I think is a three hour drive from, from Chico. So, you know, you're talking about some pretty uh, diverse areas, but obviously there's a need. And um, through, with Shasta Community Health Clinic, we are already partnered through our GME committee. They've been very helpful as we've started to launch everything. Um, but they're also part of UC Davis's compadre program. And so this program director, program coordinator for the psychiatry residency will be tapped into the UC Davis compadre program. And what they're focused on is creating this sort of um, broader consortium of all of the residency programs in, in Northern California up to OSHU and in partnership with them as well. Uh, so that faculty and residents aren't feeling like they're out, you know, in some outpost alone. I don't think that's gonna be the case for our psychiatry residency because it's gonna be a four by four, which is, you know, pretty substantial in and of itself, but also because Butte Glen Medical Society is going to be that partner, uh, you know, doing events, doing CME, um, bringing the medical community together with the residents. You know, the program director will likely have, you know, membership in BGMS and just automatically. And we'll, we'll of course provide free membership for the residents as well. And, and so we, are, we already know our community is eager to, to welcome you and uh, bring you into all the events the BGMS already does, add more um, and make you feel at home. But, but having the support and the network and the um, mentorship from com the compadre program and then connecting with all the other residency programs throughout the area, this pretty big region, um, I think will be very powerful. So, those are some of the highlights that, you know, you can't really jam in, you know, another five pages into the job description. <laughs> but um, honestly, please uh, reach out, ask questions, um, submit your, your CV uh, to um, me at um, K Makiv, M-A-K-I-E-V as in Victor E, at healthyruralca.org. And um, we'll look forward to setting up those Zoom interviews in uh, late October, November, depending on when we hear from folks, and then having in-person interviews December and January. Our GME committee will be involved with all of that. Uh, we all have a very um, uh, great time just meeting everybody and, and getting to hear uh, why, why you'd be interested. Um, I think we're offering a pretty competitive uh, stipend. Um, I guess it would be a salary of 350000 for 0.8 FTE time 
And then your clinical time would be negotiated separately with the county, Behavioral Health Butte County, who's our, our number one key partner in all of this. They have the puff, um, but they're also been with us day one saying we need to make this happen. And um, so the point two FTE clinical time would be with the county. Uh, and, you know, as uh, we're pretty convinced as 0.8 FTE, especially for launch time, um, and then just getting to that sort of steady state, and then we can, we, we can reassess at that time. But uh, yeah, we, we're, um, we're also looking at slightly higher salaries for the residents as well to ensure that we're recruiting a, a, divide, a diverse group and, and um, competing with um, the larger you know, urban uh, experiences and education programs uh, that are already in place in, in the state of California. Um, so look for some more videos. We're gonna be uh, videoing just the area, so, sort of showing the environment. Uh, we're gonna be moving into new offices as well. And I wanna showcase that because we think they're pretty cool. Um, and, uh, There'll be restaurants near these offices and some apartment, you know, housing options, which I think will be really beneficial for future psychiatry residents coming to the area. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's it. Please do ask me questions. Again, my name is Christy and I am really excited to have been able to post this job and start the recruitment of the program director. Uh, we just, this is it. This is uh, a major milestone for us. And uh, we hope that um, whoever is the candidate that um, makes the best fit uh, can start sometime in 2022. We're a little bit flexible, but um, we know that the program director will be essential for recruitment of the residents to the program. So we're hopeful, you know, maybe March, April of next year. Um, that you might be able to actually relocate and be in the area and starting to um, do those virtual meet and greets that we're gonna be doing so that um, the future residents have a chance to get to know you in, in this position as program director. Uh, I, I'm gonna be less and less um, the front person for this psychiatry residency and the program director will be more and more that person. Um, and then um, we'll be reassessing, you know, my, my time, but uh, looking forward to just uh, to making this happen and together recruiting that wonderful first cohort and every cohort following that. All right, well, you all take care. I've talked enough and um, hopefully I'll hear from you soon. Bye.